so excited because she had sold something and so we got to know yes. one another on Instagram. So, so good for you. I'm so happy for you. Um, I'm kind of a funny artist because um, I'm also a teacher. I teach high school students. And um, so all the time I'm trying to teach all these different types of things to my kids. So it's mostly 2D art that I teach, so drawing and painting and um, studio art and advanced levels of the, both of those classes. But I have all the other knowledge of uh, curation and um, working in a gallery and picture framing, and I have a lot in my background. Um, so I'm always trying different things, and I can actually draw as well as make abstractions and things. Um, but sometimes it's just more fun to do something that is abstraction. Um, I've gotten a real love for color, and I would say in the last two years, um, most, of, most of my previous practice has been in a collage, actually. Um, so doing this sketchbook was a really fun challenge for me because I, don't often work in sketchbooks. I kind of just grab pieces of paper and make things all the time to show my students. And so I had to focus in and practice with a sketchbook. And it was a great connection to bring back to my students and my art club and say, hey, this is what I'm making this week. What are you guys making? It's a great way to um, inspire one another. So we feed off a lot of each other's um, inspirations and things we're doing. Um, so, this is what I would call neurographic art, and this was a, a new technique that I learned about through um, my art teachers association. Somebody came and did um, a webinar, basically, to my, my group, and I learned about this process, and I thought it was very freeing. Um, if you have never done neurographic art, I suggest you try it. It's, it's helpful to release from your stress. You don't have to really have um, a direction to go in, whereas when you're drawing really specific, you have to measure and all of those things. And um, you, know, you just get a permanent marker and go for it. <laughs> and I uh, was doing this other type of drawing previously with washes of watercolor and outlining where things were drying. And that's where all of this kind of undulating line comes from just searching for the shapes and patterns. Um, and that's also really therapeutic. And then filling in the colors. Um, this work has a lot of iridescent um, watercolor in it. Uh, sometimes I just like to try new materials too, so it's a challenge to try new things. And my sketchbook is over here actually. I'm just gonna grab it, thank you. And um, so in the sketchbook, I really wanted to get the iridescence to show up. So. You know, with something like this, if you can get up closer to it, you see there's a lot of like sparkle to it. Um, there's parts where it's very light, very faint, and then it's pulled out in other areas. Um, so I went back and forth between this kind of neurographic art style because I wanted to work like this at first, kind of designing, and then I realized. I can't do that. <laughs> I need to go faster for this show. So I decided that I wanted to try a new process, and it was really like like a Rorschach, where you do a wash of color, squish it, and then I'd let that dry and do another one like that. And sometimes I would get a really cool effect on the backside, and so I'd outline that too. And some of these works, um, that I've done in the past, they're not in the, these books, but they end up looking like landscapes. So I've often called them accidental landscapes. And um, it's interesting because, you know, we've been so kind of solitary in this pandemic and everything, and these, you know, made up landscapes sort of showed up in my work, and there's all these connections, and I just think about like this virus is going all over the place, and, but it's connecting us as individuals. So. You know, it's, it's um, an exploration of color, line, uh, shapes, ideas like that. And that all goes back to the practice that I do with my students, which is elements and principles of art. And I never really remember any of my teachers teaching me about the elements and principles of art. So I try to like drill it into them all the time. Hey, you got to talk about texture, you got to talk about space, proportion, all these things. So then my, my next thing that I was going to do is crumble the pages and, and outline what happens if it crumbles, but it was time to hand it, so I had to stop. <laughs> um, but I had a great time doing this and, um, you know, going between black and white and patterns and things like that, and, you know, that's where the, this diptych came together.
together where it's neurographic art and searching for shapes, but then adding in um, other elements, uh, lines and, and shapes and things. So it's almost like a puzzle, you know, putting it together. Um, sometimes I like to cut these up and make new um, pieces out of them, like prepared papers. So that's kind of a quick, you know, little, in a nutshell, <laughs> what I do. Um, I actually do a lot of these also on my couch. Like, here's a original on my couch or um, you know, kitchen table, and I'm driving my poor husband crazy because everything's all over the kitchen, but <laughs> I don't have a studio proper, maybe someday. Um, but they're big, they're small, and uh, just make what, what feels good. So, that's it. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I'm open to answering them or any comments. Yeah. Yeah, do you plan to move forward with the crumpled paper? Idea? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's like a, a nice evolution from where you started. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see how that evolves. It's very cool. I think it would be really fun because yeah. it's, it's like a lot of the time you crumple the paper to throw it away. Get right. Rid of it, and this would be the purposeful crumpling of something to make it look yes. presentable, which is kind of another funny rule breaking type of thing to do. Yeah. And, um, I'm kind of particular, so to break those rules, it's kind of therapeutic to do that mm -hmm. and not be so, you know, off tight all the time about everything. Yeah. <laughs> you make a mistake and it's okay, you know? Yeah, of course. Like with your pen, yeah. so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah awesome. So we'll see what happens with that. Wonderful. Thank you. I do have a question for you. So you said, like, you know, this process feels really good. It, you do what feels good. Was there something you tried that didn't feel good that you were like, oh, that's not right? Wow, that's a good question. Um, yeah, actually, there is a piece in here that I was just sort of like, I didn't finish it because I didn't really like how it's going. And I think it's okay to abandon work sometimes. It's like if you're in a, to a book and you're reading it and you just don't like it, you abandon it, return it to the library or whatever. But this one was taking too long. And I just, I knew I started out really specific in the beginning with these and using a tiny, tiny pen because I wanted acid-free pens, you know? I'm like, come on, stop, you have to just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay, let me move on and try to do something different. So I was very uptight with these in the beginning and then said, no, we gotta change gears. And that's where I just started hurrying up and squishing and looking for the patterns and the shapes and things. So uh, that's an interesting question because uh, I don't think about stuff like that often because if it's not something I'm liking, I just put it to the side. It's not permanently in the book. You know, you can tear it out, but I didn't want to throw anything away. Just we're trying to do this project. So I'm glad you didn't because I can see the transition and I like those later. Those work. Those yeah, they're cool. Thank you. I think that's part of the whole point of the project, too, is to show people that not everything an artist does is perfect the first time. Right? Yeah, it takes work. Yeah, and it's okay to show the mistakes, you know. Yeah. Somebody else might really like it, too. That's the other thing. So yeah. you might go, oh, that's cool, <laughs> and just let them make up their mind, you know. Yeah. People don't always know your intention. I try to tell my kids that, too. Like, just, it's okay. Somebody might appreciate this. Right. 